Hi, I'm Tim Smith with Pan Pipe Productions. Water Treatment in 10 Minutes is a series of training videos for water treatment plant operators who want to learn new skills, enhance existing skills, or improve plant operations. In this video, I'll show you how to perform a filter inspection. The filters of a drinking water treatment plant are really the heart of the plant. They're crucial for disinfection and for removing particles, which we measure as turbidity. If you look at a filter after it's been backwashed, it could appear to be in very good shape. The media is very level and there's no indication there's a problem with the filter. However, there might be multiple problems under the media. One of the best ways to start a filter inspection is to drain a filter after a filter run. It's then that you might notice some problems with the filter, such as a depression in the filter media. Here's an example of some mounds in the filter media. Here's a, here's a mound here and one here and one here. Here's some more examples of depressions in the filter media. You can also see there's some mud ball. There's one right here, little one there, little one there. And here's a third example of depression in the filter. This one is right along the wall of the filter. All these are an indication that the filter is not in very good condition and it's important to get into the filter and, and see what's going on. Before you get into the filter, it's important to do all the safety procedures to ensure that all the valves are closed, it should be closed, there's air monitors, and that the other people in the plant are aware of the filter inspection so that nobody gets hurt during the inspection. In order to do a filter inspection, it's important to have some basic tools. You need a, a tape measure and a level. The first step to doing a filter inspection is to drain the filter after a filter run to get into the wash water troughs and to determine if the troughs are level. So you want to put the level uh, across the trough and then you also want to put the level between each trough. So you put the level across this way and then you would also have it go from this trough to this trough to see that everything is level within the filter. The next step is to put the level in the trough and to measure from the bottom of the level or the top of the wash water trough to the filter media. This gives you the freeboard. An important tool for mapping a filter is a gravel mapping tool. A lot of older filters had gravel to support the media. The newer filters uh, no longer do that, but if you have an older filter and it has gravel, it's important to know how level that is. And that's what the gravel mapping tool does. Here's a good example of a pin rod and also a hand dug hole. So apparently when this filter was being inspected, they must have noticed something with the gravel and they dug down to see what was, what was occurring. The way a gravel mapping tool works, here's one here. This is actually a pin rod from the distribution system. You put the gravel mapping tool into the media and the media makes a certain sound. As it hits the gravel, it makes a different sound. It kind of rings a little bit. So what you would do is you would grab the mapping tool right at the interface with the media, pull it up, and then with a tape measure, measure the distance, do this various locations in the filter to determine how level the gravel is. This is a gravel map. So what it shows is that the gravel in this filter is not that even. There is a difference of about five inches here. It's about five inches lower than it is here. It's not too bad, but it does show that there's a, an unevenness of the gravel. Another important tool is the filter coring tool. I made mine with a one and a half inch galvanized pipe and with a magic marker, marked two inch, six inch, 12 inch, 18 inch, 24 inch, 30 inch, 36 inch. The media coring tool collects media from various locations in the filter at various depths. And that media is put into a bag to create a composite. And that composite is sent to a laboratory to test for the uniformity coefficient and the effective size of the media to see if they're well matched. So you can see here in this picture, we're collecting a sample at four different locations. The first sample would be the zero to two inches, and then two to six inches, six to 12 inches. And you would collect four to six holes and, and collect a composite. And you would collect these samples in various locations within the filter, usually two or three locations within each side of the filter. Now here's the part I like, getting into a filter and digging into the media. When you dig around, you can find a lot of things. One thing you might find are mud balls. Here's a 
medium size and then, and then smaller. However, mud balls can be quite big, as you can see from this picture compared to this bucket. Mud balls indicate that the filter is not properly being washed. When you're in the filter and you're inspecting the media, you want to dig down and you want to feel the media. How does it feel? Does it feel really slimy? Does it feel like there's a gross overfeed of coagulants? Are there a lot of mud balls? How deep is the top layer there of mud? How deep does it go down into the media? Another thing you want to look for is if you have a dual media filter, and this filter in particular is anthracite and sand, how big is the interface between the anthracite and the sand? It shouldn't be more than a couple inches if it filters in good condition. If it's six, seven, eight inches, then there's an indication either the, the media wasn't properly sized or the problem with the backwash procedure. Now, this tool is not something you would go to Home Depot and buy. This is something you'd have to, to make. This is a bed expansion tool or a pan pipe, hence pan pipe productions. This tool is a variety of tubes ranging from two inches to 12 inches. What it tests is at the high wash, how much is the bed expanding? The bed should expand somewhere between maybe 20 and 30%, not typically more than 30%. This device here is used to hold the bed expansion tool on top of the media during the backwash. And this is the pipe that lowers the bed expansion tool into the filter. So you can see how this device is clamped against this rail, and then this is clamped against the pipe that holds the bed expansion tool. And here's a picture of the bed expansion tool sitting on top of the media. Another technique that works to hold the bed expansion tool in place are zip ties against the railing. Another homemade tool for the filter inspection. This is just an Algene bottle and a two inch galvanized cap duct taped against the side with some rope on the top. And the purpose of the galvanized cap is to make sure that when you throw it into the wash water trough to collect the backwash sample so that it sinks to the bottom of the wash water trough and doesn't float on the water. You can see here we're collecting a sample in the backwash trough. The sample bottle is dropped into the backwash trough during a backwash and you collect the sample every minute and then it's taken to the lab and then it's analyzed to determine the effectiveness of the backwash. Here's another picture of the bottle in the backwash trough collecting a sample. While you're collecting samples, you also want to carefully watch the backwash to see is the flow over the troughs even? How is the cloudiness, the dirtiness of the water? You know, are some areas of the filter really dirty and some areas very clean? You can see here in this picture, you have a pretty good flow here over the wash water trough. Here, there's no flow at all. So that's, that's an indication of a problem. Here's another picture you can see here. This is basically dry and this is flowing over at a pretty good, pretty good pace. If the filter has an air wash system, you also want to carefully watch the air wash. Here you can see there's a lot of agitation here, there's a lot of agitation here, and almost nothing in here. If you're looking at this backwash, you would see all this water shooting up during the air wash. This is a problem because in addition to water shooting up, you're also shooting up media, which is going to the trough and being lost and causing a problem in the backwash tank. After a sample is collected, you want to take them to the laboratory and run them for turbidity, and then graph that data. Here's a graph of that data. So you can see when you started the backwash, after a minute or two, the turbidity went up to about 250, which is good. And then it kind of gradually came down. And then at about seven, seven and a half minutes, uh, the turbidity is maybe 40. And then at nine minutes, it's maybe 20. And then from nine to about 14 minutes, the turbidity stays about 20. This is an indication that you're washing way too long. Chances are you'll, you should be able to reduce that backwash time by, you know, maybe four or five minutes. So what I would do is I would initially stop the backwash at maybe 12 minutes and then watch the filter over the next week or two and, and then see how it performs, if there's any difference. Then I would maybe cut another minute or two off and then wait a week or two and see how it performs and maybe try to get it back to about nine minutes and save all this wash water. 
This is just an example of a data report from a filter inspection. It shows the freeboard. It shows where there were excavations. It shows the anthracite depth, total media depth. And you can see this is uneven, and that's an indication that the gravel is uneven. And this is just another example of a data report showing you know, similar information. This one also shows the bed expansion, which was 29%, which is actually pretty good. Thank you for watching our video. If you have any questions or would like us to make a video on a particular topic, please put them in the comments below. If you like this series, please subscribe.